Welcome to another video part of this Django series. In this series, we're building a filter form. And in this video, we will be creating a custom command that will import our dummy data. Now, the reason for this is because it's always a little bit more fun to work with some actual data and not just have to create a few dummy posts that you can work with. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to actually create your own custom command. And we have touched on this before in another video, so I will provide a link to that video in the description. Otherwise, if you'd like to follow along, you can just go to our DJ filter repository on GitHub and you can clone this repository. And once you've got everything in your editor and up and running, then let's get started. So I have the server running and we can go ahead and view this and this is what we finished off in the last video. And so before we can actually use this, we want to have a little bit of data that we can actually filter. And earlier on, we actually set ourselves up to achieve this quite easily by creating our app, which had a name of core. And what that means is that you can actually create some folders inside this app that will house all your custom commands. So we can go ahead and start by creating a management folder. And inside there, we're going to create the commands folder and inside here you basically just create any python file the name is up to you and the way that you will execute it is by calling the python manage.py and then the argument will be the name of the file that you create here so for example if this were to be called create data.py then we would simply execute that by just calling this with the python manage.py so we'd say python manage.py create data and that will then execute this command and so we're just going to import the base command which is what you need to create your own command and this comes from django.core.management.base and we just say import base command and then we can just go and create our own class which we'll call command and say that it inherits from base command and there are two methods that we need to pass in the first is the add arguments and you can actually see that it was prompted there and we don't need this to return super of that but we'll do something else instead so you can see the arguments are self and parser now parser is what we use to actually add the arguments so we say parser dot add argument singular and then as a string we'll say this is the file name now the file is going to contain a list of journal titles and it's basically going to loop through that file which will be a txt file and for each row in the file it's going to create a journal now if we just take a look at the models again we're going to need to create all the fields on the journal when we do this so the title is going to be inside the txt file and then all these other fields we're going to randomly generate specifically the published date views and reviewed will be completely random but the author and the categories I'm going to limit to a certain number of options. So for example, we could have five authors and we could have eight categories and the selection of those is going to be random. We're going to create some functions that will generate that for each of these fields. But for now, what we're going to do is just work on taking in an input, which is the file name. And we can actually pass in the type, which is going to be string. And we can also pass in help, which is some help text for what this argument is actually for. And we can say this is the txt file that contains the journal titles. And so there's our argument and that's it. That's the only argument that we need to pass in. And so now that we've added an argument, the second thing to do is to handle it. So handle is the second method we need to call. And so here what we do is we first grab the actual value of the argument we passed in. So in our case, the file name equals two, and I'm gonna change this options to be keyword args. So of those keyword args, we are grabbing the file name as that's the name of the argument we're passing in. And we're then going to open that file. We're gonna loop through it, and we're gonna create those entries. So let's actually go to the top and we'll say from core.views import journal and we're also going to need the category 
and the author as well because we're going to create those as well and so then down here we'll say with open and we'll use f strings here so this is the file name and then in here we'll have .txt and we're going to say open this as file which is our variable name and then we can loop through it by saying for row in file then each row is basically going to be a title so we could say title equals row and then we're going to need an author name we're going to need a category name we're going to need a publish date we're going to need views and we're going to need a reviewed as well and so now we're going to create some generator functions here at the top to actually generate a random value for these over here and so what i'm going to do is just create a list of categories and a list of authors so just like this we've got five categories and we've got eight authors the values don't actually matter but it's more just to have something so you could have your own values as well and then we're going to define our first one which will generate the author name and it's not going to take in any parameters because it's random so if we want to use random we're going to need to import it and basically what we'll do is we'll generate a random number between zero and seven because there are eight items in the list and that will basically be the index of the item in the list that we want to get so if we want to do that we're going to need to import random so we say import random and then here we'll just say that the index equals to random dot random integer from zero and to seven and notice it says including both endpoints that's why we say seven and then all we do is just say return authors of that index so that will return one of these values and now you can see the logic behind this so we could go and generate the category name as well and it will be the same concept except now there are only five so we'll say from zero to four and then we'll say return categories of index over here rather so now we can take those functions and we can say that the author name equals generate author name and we can say that the category equals to gener generate category name then generating the views is quite simple we'll do that one first we can just say define generate view count and again we'll just use random integer so we'll say return random dot random int and i'm just going to say from zero to a hundred because the list that I have of titles is only about 250 titles. So to keep the numbers within a small range so that we can filter it and still have some journals left on either side of the filter, we're not going to spread the data too much. So there's the generate view count. And then we can just say just like that. And then we'll do the reviewed. So we'll say define generate is reviewed and here we're basically just going to generate a random integer between zero and one if it's zero then it's false if it's one then it's true because remember the reviewed is a boolean field so it needs to be passed a value of either true or false so we'll say that the value equals to random dot random integer from zero to one and then we'll just say if val equals zero then return false otherwise return true and then we'll just pass it there and then lastly for the publish date to generate a date there are quite a number of ways you can do this you can also just check stack overflow and how to do this and even though we are using a date time field that means that we could specify all the way to the hours minutes and seconds i'm just going to keep this as a date just to keep it simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a random date time object, which is basically going to be between two years. So we could say between 2000 and 2030. And then we can say the day is between one and 28, just because of February. And then we can say the month is between one and 12. So that way we're always generating a random date between those two time periods. And if you wanted to go all the way to the 
minute and second, then you could also do that. But so we're going to need date time. So we'll import it here at the top and then we'll just come down here. We'll say define generate publish date and then we'll just say return date time dot date. And here we need to pass in a year, a month and a day. So what we can do is we can just say random dot random integer from 2000 to 2030. And we could do, we could actually do this. We can say year equals this month and day. And we'll say month is between one and 12 day is between one and 28. And then we just pass in year, month and day. And so that is our date time. So now we can just come here and we'll say generate publish date. And so then we can just print this out. So we'll say print all those fields and then we will run that. And we're saying, oh, this is meant to be core.models. Let's try it again. And now it's saying that the following arguments are required, which is the file name. So I'm just going to go and paste this file in here and you can get this from the repository. And so this is basically just a list of U2's albums and U2 related titles. So there it is. And now we can then pass that in. So we'll say create data and we'll say that the argument is titles. And now you can see it's printing all that data out. So you get the title, music is the category, Michael is the author and then there's the date and then views is 67 and it was reviewed. So that is our random data. Now we just create the actual journal, the author and the category. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the author so that we can assign that in the journal. And then afterwards we save the journal and then we add the categories to it. And that because the categories are a many to many field, we can't add the categories without the journal being saved first. So we'll say that the author equals to author dot objects dot get or create. And we'll just pass in name equal to author name. Then we can say that the journal equals to a journal object. And we're just going to pass in title equals title and then author equals to then here we just need to do another query otherwise it doesn't save it correctly so we'll say objects dot get where name equals author name and then we'll say that the publish date equals to publish date we'll say that the views equals to views and we'll say that reviewed equals to review as well. And once we've created that, then we can say journal.save and then we can create the categories. So here we'll say category equals to category and we'll say name equals to category name. Then we'll say category.save and then we'll say journal.categories.add category. So now every time we loop through one row, it will create the author if it needs to, and then it will create the journal and then it will create the category. And actually I think we can do this a little bit better. We'll say dot objects dot get or create. And then we'll do the same sort of thing here. We'll say category dot objects dot get where name equals to category name. That's our script. Then just to end it off, we can do this right at the end of this entire loop. We can then just say self dot standard out dot right. And we'll say self dot style dot success. And we'll just say data imported successfully. 
So now let's try run the script. So Python manage.py, create data, titles, and okay, we're just not meant to save there anymore. Let's try it again. And there we go, data imported successfully. And we can see this in the admin, if we just run the server. And let's go here. And if we go to authors, there you can see all the eight authors, categories, there's all five, journals, there we go. So 256 journals. And now we actually have some data that we can filter. And so that is all we're going to be doing in this video. In the next one, we'll get started with actually filtering the data now that we have some. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.